Oh, they're people. getting hotels. What we're on about is our, our children who were born and bred here. Our descendants have kept this city going and running. And now the way our children and grandchildren are being treated and they're being thrown out onto the street like the pieces of rubbish. Now that cannot go on. Okay, we're protesting today for the homeless because they've got there's, there's, there was 50 people um, the other night who were homeless on the street and they've got no overnight shelter, no warm space that they can put their head. And I think Liverpool City Council should hold their heads in shape. We, need, we all need to do our bit to help these people because in January, the temperatures are going to go really low and they have no right putting our children and our grandchildren on the streets of Liverpool. I am ashamed of these councils and they should be ashamed but it's not my doing it's theirs now this just brings me to um liverpool city council and labor have been running this city for 13 years now the section 21's no fault evictions have been around since 1988 so why haven't liverpool city council done anything to know because they'd have known this was coming so they haven't done anything to these buildings. They haven't built new houses. They've just they've moved all our houses to the students, to foreigners, and they've left our kids homeless and destitute. They're, they're a disgrace. How many tents would you say that are on the on the streets on the streets in Liverpool? Okay, well there's, there was about 30 tents the other night, and there was about 50 people, um, and some were sharing tents. Hi there, you're right. Have you have you got a comment about the the amount of homelessness in Liverpool, and, um, and what are the council doing to provide a, a simple things like a night shelter for these people? Managed to solve the homelessness crisis during COVID, and once COVID was gone, suddenly it couldn't be solved. Why? It's all about resources, and I think. Cynically, during COVID, homeless people were a risk. After COVID, they're no longer a risk, so people don't care. And I, I find that abhorrent, especially this time of year. Christmas and the cold and the rain, it's so much more. And as for tents being a lifestyle choice. Obviously, we've got, got all these people out here protesting. Um, I think the bare minimum that, that they want is, 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 a, is a night shelter. I mean, you've got so many empty council buildings. I think it, it's good to see so many people here who are raising this issue. They genuinely care for the people and, of this city. And, and, and I think that is very important. And uh, I think, I mean, if you see different stratagems in different cities around the world to solve this problem. And I think we've got to accept all ideas and at least investigate them and see what's realistic. I mean, you, you mentioned a night shelter. It was a night shelter just before COVID and, and it was working fantastic, it had fantastic results, brought the drug, the crime rates, put people on a path, give them hope, give them something to live for. And the, and the council actually shut that down on health and safety grounds. Well, you'd have to say there, what's better? A night shelter that maybe does have some problems and some issues or get rid of it. It's a greater health and safety hazard, I think, with no kind of shelter Absolutely, at all. it is, it is. Um, so, I, I mean, you're right, there are, there are a lot of council buildings and other... There's parts of the Cunard building which are... Even parts. the Cunard building. Uh, I mean, if you, if you go to the private sector, you can find empty buildings within a hundred yards walk of where we are. Nonetheless, they, they are a resource which could be marshalled in some way. Yeah. Sound patronising. I think people look, need to be looked on as being victims. It's not a choice they've made. Absolutely it isn't. Uh, and okay, some of them have made mistakes in one way or another, but who's perfect? It's got to be compassion of basic humanity. So why why are our children, our grandchildren, living on the streets in our city? Can you tell me that please? 
Well, I think one of the reasons is that it's, it's, it's not given a high enough priority. Why not? Because, I don't, well, I don't think this government is giving okay. the, the funds available. Okay. It's not... It's not the refugees? Yeah, it's not, no, it's not down to the government. No, I, I wouldn't scapegoat anybody for this. I, I mean, the, refu so the refugees... Oh, they're getting hotels. What we're on about is our, our children who were born and bred here. Our descendants have kept this city going and running. And now the way our children and grandchildren are being treated and they're being thrown out onto the street like the pieces of rubbish. Now that cannot go on and we need, we need to stop it. I think, oh, I think we've got to have um, social housing has, has got to be... Uh, boosted that have got to be new homes available. How many empty homes are are there in the country? How many empty buildings in this city yeah, a lot. that could be converted? <laughs> It'll be a long night. Clearly, the match call report was created by the Labour Party and the Conservatives together. It is, this is not a partisan thing. This is about right and wrong. Introduce yourself. Your name is Paul Casey. Uh, Paul Casey. Are you born and bred in Liverpool? Been yeah. Here? Yeah. How long have you been on the streets? For eight years. Eight years. Yeah. In 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 Liverpool. In but, Liverpool. And I've been in and out of Walton and all that, but you know, it's just. Jail streets, jail. They're still trying to find me a night number. Night. You know what I mean? So, so there's no night shelters in Liverpool there's or anything. Nothing. No, no they, night night buses or anything. Any, anything. Nothing. Is is there medical teams that come out uh, are available? Do you know, like sometimes people come around with food and all that, but not medical and that. There's a homeless um like doctor you can go to, but you know that's miles away. No one comes around to see it to see if you're okay. Night shelter, and we also want section 21. We vote. We haven't even got a voice in there. We want to speak for the homeless who haven't got a voice. They're all warm in there, ready for their cosy Christmas. They boxed each other off. The police have got no empathy with anyone. Thankfully, there's a few of us who are here. We're going to stand up for the homeless people. I wouldn't like to have to sleep on these streets. God. Thank God I'm not one of them, so I haven't been able to speak, but if there's any of them in here, we'd like them to speak. If we've got any homeless amongst us, you tell them what, what it's like. It's got like, until like 7am, and then you could go to like, um, Langsdale Street, do I travel from 8am um, till 8pm, right? And both of them are closed now. When did they close those down? On the lockdown. On the lockdown. Well, minimum. Hello, yeah. I've just got into a temporary accommodation, yeah. The documents got passed over to the council last February. Last February. Last February. And it was only through meeting a woman out of the Labour Council two weeks ago. And me, by like, speaking to her directly, and it was through a friend, but also someone that knew her, that she listened to me and took me took me details. And that woman took care in three days, what? Well, she meant to have been taken care of from last February. Yeah, yeah, it's disgusting. So in the meantime, I've been put in temporary accommodations where it's been full of people with crack addictions, heavy duty, like, horrible. I'm going in there saying, look, I can't do this. And I'm going to come out. After that, you call, you call Caroline. And I've been in blizzards in March when the blizzards come in suddenly and that. And I've called them and they say, you've come out of somewhere that we've given you already. I'm like, well, what, you know, so I don't know how do you expect people to go into their places as an answer. So I do see why people choose to be out, you know. Yeah. With the night, I don't know, I was just seeing the other day with, on the, on the, online, this, this new councillor, you know, talking about it, writing a letter to the government about the, the crisis. Sarah, 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 Sarah Dorman, she, she, she's, she's the housing, min, housing minister, yeah, is she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it was, it was someone that I put her name on the, on the, on the tweet, 
and it was this fella he, he must be the head counsellor and he basically um, was saying he wrote this letter so I went online is that Liam Robinson Liam Robinson yep yeah counsellor Robinson you know I was reading it and you know what it was more to do with the immigration I've seen, I've seen that letter I've, I've seen, seen, I've him, seen yeah. that letter yeah. so he's, he's, he's more like condolences to, towards them absolutely and, yes you know PTSD and all yeah. that most people are on the stage absolutely, absolutely. is that PTSD going yeah. in more of their muscles and being in there yeah. you know if you, haven't, if you haven't got addictions and that it's, it's traumatic being introduced like, in there as the person who doesn't smoke crack yeah. 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 there you go there you go you know what I mean? Then you see how then the, how the YMCA managed the place, and then you know it's all about money to get the 360 pound people for the places. Is that is that what the 360 a what, week per individual? And then you want you to pay a service charge of 15 pound yeah. yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so so, 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 they're, so they're getting 380 pound per week per person. Homeless, and she's in the hotel. Is that correct? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, two two young daughters. Yeah, she's got two young daughters. One same. Eight and the other one's six. Okay. And um, social services were involved, and they promised her a place on the Friday. And the social worker went off on holiday on the Wednesday. They were caught short on the Friday. Tried to get in touch with powers and options. Does get anyone know what the match call report is? Nobody was like, get no. back to us. Okay. Um, and then a really kind businessman in the city Clearly come along the match and offered them to move to stay for five nights. Okay. And um, they went into a hotel for two nights and an Airbnb for three. And then by that time, like the school were involved in it, and then they actually and said, the headmistress actually said, if um, you don't get these children somewhere to stay by, close the business tonight at three when the kids are coming out of school, then they're not getting released from the school. So, how's an option? Got in touch and they give her a, a place to stay in town. And, and um, you know, we're all trying to keep in touch with them. We reckon we've got to prove the case now for 56 days, I think it is, whether she's actually deemed homeless or not with the two children. And we're like, well, you are homeless because you're living in a hotel. Hotel is absolutely rammed with single people, with children. And married couples with children are all coming out, getting nation, on buses, they're not getting no financial help, you can't get a bus ticket out of the social services or anywhere, um, and they're all going in school uniforms, to trooping out, there's all alcoholics on the streets and drug use and everything, it's absolutely abominable. Poor people sleeping in the doorways outside the hotels, it's an absolute disgrace. We're one of the richest cities in the UK. Okay. and you know it's come to this it and all the tax, the council the tax, council everything, the road tax, you take off us and our people are living like and this. You've got no, like no services for your money, have you? No, absolutely nothing. What do we pay our taxes for, for our children to end up in a bloody hotel, you know? It's absolutely discreet. People are going on the street now and that's not acceptable. I mean, now they have every right, the basic amenities of life, are food, shelter, clothes for warmth and water. Now, the people of this city and others have not got the basic amenities anymore. I've been liaising with Sarah Doyle. Right. And because I, I can't sleep of the night mm. thinking about these people on the street, because it's really, they're vulnerable, you know, and it's not just being cold, you know, they're being attacked. I mean, it's not a place to be. So I've been asking for a warm overnight shelter space for these people to at least go to so as they can have friends. Be out of the weather. They can be out, you know, in a warm place and they're not on the street. Please, can you make that happen? Can I will you? certainly ask about it. I'll certainly do please? my best. Uh, but Because I pray. So these people really need to, to get into a warm space. Mm. I mean, I don't understand why it can't happen when we've got all these buildings that are empty. We just need one. I understand. And I've been liaising with Sarah telling her mm. that there's a guy who's been walking the streets mm. for seven years doing an outreach and he's got 60 volunteers and everyone would do, it, do their bit for free. Mm. So they don't want paying. I'll probably see them tonight when I'm yeah. on my way home. They're giving out sandwiches and hot drinks. Yes. And they're, what... they're all volunteers. Yeah, yeah, they do. You know, and that's, that's just... But it shouldn't be down to the people yeah. to be doing that, should it? It shouldn't, but it's like so many things. And this is not just to find the situation. Sorry, it's, it's a good job for they're there to do it. Doing. 
Sarah Dill. Was that Sarah Dill? Yeah, I, I know she did. Do, yeah. Of course it's not. been lovely to you. Thank you. Okay. What do you think you can do to yes, put pressure yes. and get these people's yeah. messages across? Yeah. Greatly appreciated. Okay. Have a good evening. Yeah, yeah, it's me. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm really sorry to call you today. Oh, really? We're hoping in the middle of January there should be a school to open in the city centre. Okay. Yeah, so we want, I think things always slow down the day before Christmas. Starting from the beginning of January, there should be a school to look out there. And then we're thinking of doing that. Thank so you so much. No, it's okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. No, no, it's like okay. Ideally, there wouldn't be a need for it. But you know what, Angela, a lot of the people are just like me. Yeah. Um, some's homeless. That's the thing, the government needs to end Section 21s yeah. mm -hmm. and there needs to be more funding into social house building. But that, the, yeah, there has to be. The, I mean, Angela's the cabinet member for adult social care, so we have to always be working on this with Angela anyway okay. and making sure that people where there was more complex issues that they have that support. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of things that we see is that sometimes people have a mental health aspect yeah. or mm -hmm. that they have that support if they are with somewhere. But, okay. so, yeah. Well, thank you so That's much. So I think it's my What's the number of homeless that you're aware of in the city? What are the numbers? Um, so we have around 550, 550 individuals slash families in bed and breakfast accommodation. Um, there's about another 400 that are in other forms of temporary accommodation. So there's about 1,000 in total in temporary accommodation. And in terms of the sleeping rough figures on the streets, when there's the outreach, around 20 to 26. Options. So housing options is our team in the council that if someone is declaring themselves as homeless or saying that we haven't got a place yep. of their own, that then feeds into our overall figures. Okay, okay. okay. That's okay. okay. Thank brilliant. You. Thank, you, thank, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. In the middle? M middle of January. Okay. Um, what was that? Was that in relation to a building? That the they... warm overnight space, yeah. So, so she didn't say what building or what, no. what, what they've got, but they've... But they've... she did say it should be, should be ready for the middle of January, didn't she? Brilliant. Fantastic. <laughs> did you run out to me? I did, I did, I did, I <laughs> did. I wasn't uh, with the people that you to told the way, and you are all getting dragged down the same road, really. All I can say is, I'm here, I'm talking. I'm long, how long have I been standing outside? A quarter hour, maybe an hour and a quarter. No, not that one. Half an hour. Maybe you want to speak with us? Well, you know, he's definitely off the clock now, oh, yeah, isn't he? So give him that. But, you know, I'm a liberal Democrat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The emphasis is on Democrats yeah, yeah, yeah. and liberal. You know, that's, if the words yeah. say it. So that's, that's uh, I, say, I, I think it's... It's our duty to talk it's an to old, people. It's another Labour Party might listen to us when no one's voting for them. Yeah. Hey, they might start listening to us. Oh, man. Hey. I couldn't possibly say. Well, there again, you know what to say, don't you? Hey, sure. you put a red rose on a pig <laughs> and they'll vote for them. Miss City, anyway. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, good That's to talk to you. Right,